So welcome everyone. It is day 20 of Pray Your Child Into Purpose. And today we're going to be praying for our children about mistakes. About mistakes. How many of us here? Show of hands. Drop me a comment. You've never, ever in your life, like I'm so perfect, have never made a mistake before. Please drop me a comment. I want to hear from you. Like you've never made a mistake before. Everything in your life has been so awesome perfect you've been amazing you've been doing an excellent job like you don't make mistakes i want to hear from you because i want to take tips from you like how are you doing it every one of us at some point in our lives have made mistakes and that is exactly why we needed the saving saving power of jesus like because he's the, he wants to save us he wants to do something we all make mistakes right and that is why we're going to pray for our children today because we all make mistakes. Like there's no avoiding it. There'll be times when you will have done the wrong thing. You, you thought God said something to you, but he didn't really say it. And then you went out on a tangent doing things on your own. But we're not going to say because we make mistakes, then we stay in those mistakes, right? We don't stay there. We don't stay. We don't wallow in our mistakes. We don't remain in that place of mistakes. As far as God is concerned, our mistakes should never define our lives and who we end up becoming. It's always up to us to about how we proceed, like how am I going to proceed after I've made these mistakes? Will I stay down here weeping and crying because, well, I made a mistake? What will I do about it? The Bible says in James 3, 2, we all stumble in many ways. We all stumble in many ways. And that is exactly why Jesus has provided us a way of escape. He says, if we, if we say we have no sin, that's 1 John 1, 8. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves and we are not being truthful to ourselves, right? And that same Bible says, though a righteous man falls seven times, he will get up. That is what God wants for us. To keep getting up, to keep moving, to keep going. Not to stay stuck in our mistakes. Not to stay stuck in what, we are, what we've done. The sin we've committed. He wants our children to get to a place where they are quick to repent and to focus on, on the future. And what God has in store for their lives. And that's what we're going to pray for our children about the mistakes that they may make on the path of purpose. If someone will turn their lives around and proceed to become all that God wants them to be, then certain things must be present in their lives. Like, they must first of all identify the error they've made. And sometimes they may not know. Like, they may just be doing their thing, they think, thinking that they are doing the right thing. They may not know that they've made this mistake. They may just be going, carrying on in their own human flesh, not even when they're doing the wrong thing. Sometimes you take another person, it may take another person to call them out on their mistakes, right? See what happened to David and Nathan the prophet when David committed Uriah's wife, Bathsheba, committed adultery with her, stealing her from Uriah, lying to him, and eventually committing murder, right? Killing the husband so she could, he could have Bathsheba. And then the prophet Nathan comes, confronts David about his sin, and he immediately repents, confessing that sin. And when they have that child that is born to them, David fasts, he prays, mourns his sin, and all that. And then when the child dies, David simply receives his outcome as God's judgment, and then he moves on and doesn't stay stuck in that sin. We're going to pray for our children, right? And the Lord will open their eyes to any wrongdoing, as a journey on the path of purpose. At any point in time in their lives when they will make mistakes, or somebody calls them out for the mistakes they've made, that they will not be, that they will, they will be able to see that they've done the wrong thing. It won't say, they won't say, no, there's nothing wrong with this. That the Holy Spirit himself will be the convictor, right? Convicting them of their sin. Convicting them of any time that they have made a mistake, convicting them of any time that they have that there have been errors in their lives, we're going to say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray, oh God, that our children will be able to identify and come to realize their wrongdoing in the name of Jesus. That, Lord, we pray for them that they will not be living in delusion, thinking, oh, I'm doing everything right, when they have gone off on a tangent. Well, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you will help them convict them of sin. You will help them to understand when they've done the wrong thing, when they have not been where they have been caught up in their own wrongdoing. Holy Spirit, we ask in the name of Jesus, that Lord, you will give us the grace, the grace, the grace, the grace, to not that, that they will be able to see when they have done the wrong thing in their lives, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. 
We're going to pray for our children that the Lord will surround them with people that will tell them the truth. Not some yes men that will say, oh yes, you are doing amazing, even when they are going down the wrong path. But the Lord himself will bring people like Nathan around them, you know, people that will help them to be better, people that will point out their wrongdoing in love, call them out when they have messed up terribly. Lord, we pray for people. People like that, even in my own life also. I pray for my children in the name of Jesus that they will be surrounded with people, oh God. That will not just be yes men, but people that will call them out when they have done the wrong thing. People that will call them out in love, pointing out their mistakes to them. That will not allow them to go down the wrong path. Lord, surround them with people around them, oh God. That will point out the wrong, the wrongdoing to them in the name of Jesus. They will not be surrounded with yes men who don't care. They just want to make them feel good about themselves. But people that will be truthful to them, authentic in calling out their wrongdoing in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the second thing that these people must have, people that when they make mistakes, they move on. They don't dwell in the mistakes. They don't stay there. You know, they, they learn from and they grow from them. People that will fulfill their purpose even though they've made mistakes before. Second thing that they must be humble enough to acknowledge their wrongdoing. See what happened with David. The Bible says that David immediately repented. He wasn't still saying, oh, you see, I don't think so. I don't think I made a mistake. You know, maybe, maybe, maybe. No, no, he wasn't arguing with the prophet. He immediately repented and confessed his. And I'm going to read to you a story of, I don't know whether we are familiar with this story in the Bible. The story of Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 4. I'm, going to, I'm just going to read a few verses just to point out the point um. The summary of the story to you, right? Daniel chapter 4, the story of Nebuchadnezzar. The Bible says that Nebuchadnezzar dreams of a tree. And then he's worried about the dream. He calls, as usual, the magicians, astrologers, enchanters, diviners, blah, blah. They couldn't imp interpret it for him. And then finally, Daniel came in verse 8. And I, he told him the dream, explained the dream to him and everything. And then verse, verse 19 says, Daniel was perplexed for a time. And his thoughts terrified him. And then he started to explain the meaning of the dream to him. And in verse 24, Daniel 4, 24, the Bible says, this is the interpretation. Your majesty, this is the interpretation, your majesty. And this is the decree the most high has issued against my lord, the king. You'll be driven away from the people and will live with the wild animals. You will eat grass like the ox. And be drenched with the dew of heaven. Seven times will pass, will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the Most High is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone that he wishes. And it explains everything to him and says, Therefore, your majesty, verse 27, be pleased to accept my advice. Renounce your sins by doing what is right and your wickedness by being kind to the oppressed. It may be that then your prosperity will continue. Daniel explained to the king, Nebuchadnezzar, what the problem was, what he had done wrong, what he should do about the sin. What did Nebuchadnezzar do? He didn't care. Like, whatever. I don't care. Verse 28, the Bible says, all this happened to King Nebuchadnezzar. Twelve months later, as he was walking on the roof of the royal palace of Babylon, he said, is not this the great Babylon I have built as a royal residence by my mighty power, and for the glory of my majesty? This guy didn't even care. Like, he didn't repent. A whole year had passed. He didn't like, oh, God, I'm so sorry. No. It's like, whatever. Daniel was just saying nonsense. I don't care what you think. <laughs> the Bible says, 31. Daniel 4, 31. Even as the words were on his lips, a voice came from heaven. Like, guy, dude, bruh, like my son would say, I have given you enough time to repent but what did you do you didn't care this is what will happen your royal authority has been taken from you you'll be driven away from the people verse 32 and will live with the wild animals you will eat grass like the ox seven times will pass by for you until you acknowledge that the most high is sovereign over all the kingdom of the earth and immediately it was fulfilled. Driven away from the people, became an animal for seven years. We're going to pray for our children. <laughs> that when the Lord brings people their way to say you have done wrong, 
or when the Holy Spirit opens their eyes to say that they have done wrong, they will not be like this foolish man. They won't stay foolish. They will say, Lord, I am sorry. I repent before you. I come before you with a heart of humility. I will not let pride be my stumbling block. They don't say, Father, Lord, my children will be humble enough to acknowledge their wrongdoing in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for our children. That, Lord, they will, they will have a humble heart, acknowledging their wrongdoing, ready to repent before you, not pride, not, not, not allowing pride to, to, to engross their heart, not allowing pride to fill their heart, not allowing pride to take over their heart. We pray for them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord, pride will not be the downfall of our children. We pray for our children, that, Lord, the humble heart you will give to them to come to a place of acknowledgement of every wrongdoing, that they will repent before the Lord in the name of Jesus. Pride will have no place in you. Pride will have no place in you in the name of Jesus. The Bible says about David, you know, Psalm 51, if you read the entire chapter, it talks about how David repented before God. David didn't say, oh yes, I'm all this, I'm a king, I can do what I like. No, he came humbly before the Lord and said, Lord, I am fully aware of all I have done wrong. My guilt is there staring me in the face. It was against you, only you that I sinned. I have done what you say is wrong right before your eyes. Lord, <laughs> he said, help me, help me, help me, help me. Cleanse me, wash me inside out. All my crooked deeds, cleanse me from my sins. We're going to say our children will be humble enough to come to a place of repentance. They will not allow pride to fill their heart. They will not be prideful in their doings. They will acknowledge their wrongdoing and they will face their sins and acknowledge it and come to a place of repentance in the name of of Jesus. See the Bible talking about um, the story of Judas Iscariot. See him versus the story of Peter. Same disciples, Judas Iscariot, what did he do? After he had denied Jesus, you know, betrayed him, he committed suicide eventually. See what happened to Peter. Peter also had the same sin, right? But Peter came back into the fold. He became someone who came back and even preaching the gospel. We're going to say again, Lord, in the name of Jesus, my child will not be puffed up or proud and refuse to identify the sins in their lives. But Lord, you will help them to accept their wrongdoing and to come before you in repentance. In the name of Jesus. Our children will not be puffed up. They will not be proud. They will not, they will, they will not refuse. To identify the sins and the wrongdoing in their lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, another another thing that, that this kind of people must have. The people who their mistakes will not, will not define them. They are, they'll be willing to move ahead on the journey of purpose. We're going to pray for our children that they will, they will be willing to truly repent. You know, it's something for somebody to come to you and say, yes, you've done wrong. It's another thing for you to say, I will repent. I, you know, I will not hide this sin because the Bible says that anybody who tries to hide their sin will not prosper. But the one who confesses and leaves the sin, who forsakes the sin behind, will find mercy. Happy is the one that fears the Lord. But the person that hardens his heart to God falls into misfortune. That is Proverbs chapter 28. That is what the Bible says. We're going to say, Lord, help my child to have a heart of flesh and not of stone. That they will be tender towards the Lord, repenting of their sins and willing to truly make amends in the name of Jesus. I pray for my children, oh God. You have a heart of flesh. You know, uh, your heart is not hardened before the Lord. You have a heart of flesh. Your heart is tender before the Lord. It's not of stone. You will repent of your sins. You'll be willing to truly make amends in the name of Jesus. I pray for you, my child, that your heart will not be hardened. You will not become a hardened sinner, but your heart will be tender before the Lord, truly repentant before God, truly tender before the Lord, repenting of your sins, willing to truly make amends as you commit sin, as you make mistakes on the journey of purpose, you will realize that a heart of flesh is what the Lord desires, is what the Lord wants for you in the name of Jesus. These people must be willing to decide to turn their backs against their sin. We're going to pray for our children. The Lord, as they seek forgiveness from you, as they repent of their sins, they will not go back to those sins. They will turn their back on the sin. They will turn their back on this iniquity. They will turn their backs on this wrongdoing in the name of Jesus. They will truly repent. Repentance is turning around 
It's not just paying lip service and say, oh, okay, that was a sin. Okay, Lord, I'm sorry. And then you go back to the sin again the next day. We're going to say, Lord, our children will be, will be willing. They will decide to turn their backs against this situation, against this sin, against this wrongdoing. And the Lord, they receive the power from you to turn their backs, to truly, truly live above this sin, to be victorious above every mistake that they have made in the past, that they will make as a journey on, the, on this path of purpose. We pray for them, oh God, that Lord, our children will turn their backs against every evil against every wrongdoing, against every mistake, against every iniquity, in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. When Nebuchadnezzar acknowledged his sin, when he acknowledged that he had done wrong, what, what happened to him? The Bible says that he came to his senses and he now said, oh, I'm sorry, Lord. Until he came to the point where he acknowledged God. That was when, that was when he's, he, he came back to his normal senses. We're going to pray for our children that even as God is helping them, they've repented, they've turned their back on the sin. They will not allow themselves to be caught up in wallowing in sin. See what happened with Rahab. Rahab did not, chose not to allow her past to define her. And then she found her way into the people, in, in, into the body of, of the people of God. She came and married into Israel because she refused to allow her past to dictate to her how her future will be. See the story of Ruth. Ruth was a Moabite. She wasn't supposed to even be in the gathering of God's people. But see how God turned her story around? That she now became a part of the lineage of grace. We're going to pray for our children. Because the Bible says there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Why? Because the law of the Spirit, because through Jesus Christ, the law of the Spirit who gives life, has set them free from the law of sin and death. We're going to pray for our children that they will not be caught up in condemnation. They will not allow themselves to wallow in the past, wallow in their mistakes, wallow in their sin, wallow in their wrongdoing. But they will, they will, they will lift up their heads, embrace the forgiveness that the Lord offers, embrace the new life that the Lord offers them, and they will be able to move ahead on this path of purpose, not, not, not allowing the labels of the past to define them in the name of Jesus. We pray that as the Lord forgives our children, they will forgive themselves, not wallowing in sin, not wallowing in the shame of their sin, not allowing the label of sin to be placed on them, to limit them, to, to, to get them stuck, to get them to stop from moving ahead on the path of purpose. We pray in the name of Jesus, that Lord, as the Lord forgives them, they will forgive themselves. They will not wallow in sin, do not wallow in their past, in the shame and the guilt, in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to pray for our children and they will embrace the newness of the life in Christ Jesus. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 6 to 8, that anyone who lives in Christ does not go on sinning. Anyone who goes on sinning has never really understood Christ and has never really known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you the wrong way. Christ is righteous. So to be like Christ, the person must do what is right. Anyone who continues to sin belongs to the devil. But the Son of God came for this very reason, to destroy the work of the devil. The Bible says, one of my favorite scriptures, reckon yourself dead to sin. There's a place of reckoning that we have to do. We are already dead to sin. That is what Jesus Christ came to do for us on the cross of Calvary. He died and rose again so that we can have a new life in Christ Jesus. But until we come to a place where we reckon ourselves dead to sin and begin to live like people who are truly above sin, then we will stay stuck in the past. So we're going to pray for our children that they will embrace the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Because the Bible says that anyone who lives in Christ does not go on sinning. They will embrace the work that Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. They will embrace the newness of life in Christ Jesus. They will reckon themselves dead to sin. That is the place that they are going to be living in. Living above sin. Not rising today, falling tomorrow. Our children come to a place of embracing the newness of life in Christ Jesus. They no longer continue to sin. They no longer continue to stay in the place of sin. But they, they live according to who God has made them to be. Rising above sin. Living above sin embracing the newness of life in Christ Jesus. Amen. 
We're going to we're rounding up now. We're going to pray for our children. We're going to say, Lord, as my children come to this place of mistakes and of, and of learning and of growing, I'm going to pray for my child today that the Lord will help them to learn from their mistakes and grow through them. That they will not waste the pain of the discipline that the Lord has given them. See what happens to Nebuchadnezzar now. When he suffered for seven years as, as an animal, in the, living in the in the guys, this is not even a joke. Living as, as an animal in the fields, in the fields. That is what they call God. Truly brought him to his lowest. But our children will not forget the lessons that they are, that they learn from these mistakes. They will grow through them. They will not waste the pain of the discipline. They will not waste this discipline, but they will grow through it. And they will learn from them and become better people because of it in the name of Jesus. All we pray for our children, oh God, that they will learn from their mistakes. They will grow through them. They will not waste the discipline, but they will grow through these things. They will learn from, from the pain of, of the discipline, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because your word says that you only chastise, you only discipline the ones you love. And we know that you love us. You love our children. And that is why you want them to learn. You want them to grow through pain. You want them to become better people. We pray, oh God, that even as our children come to a place of acknowledging their wrongdoing and they and they repent and turn their backs on the scene, whatever discipline that you give them, they will learn from them, oh God. They will learn from these mistakes. They will grow through them. They will not waste their pain. They will not waste the discipline. They will not waste the chastisement of the Lord, but they will grow through them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Let us begin to give God the glory again for another time to pray. Lord, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We thank you, mighty God, for the grace to pray, for the grace to come before you again, to lift up our voices before you. We bless your name. We thank you for answered prayers again for first day, first, first 20 days of this prayer journey. We thank you, oh God, for being with us. We thank you for days 1 to 20. We thank you for, for days 21 to 30. The next 10 days to go, we bless your name. We give you all the glory. We thank you, mighty God, because we see you moving in a new way in our lives. We give you glory. We give you praise because our children will no longer be the same because of the work you've already started in their lives. Blessed be your name, mighty God. For in Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you for joining for day 20. Join us again to pray tomorrow for day 21. And I trust that the Lord himself will continue to strengthen us and give us the grace to keep praying, to keep declaring his word in the name of Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah.